By the end of the 1200s, the papacy seemed to have dealt with criticism successfully, but at a high cost of its prestige. As a result, the popes could not withstand a serious challenge to their political power from secular princes. The power of the Western kings was growing over the Middle Ages, especially in France and England. The collapse of papal political power began with a dispute between Pope Boniface VIII and the strongest king in Europe, Philip IV of France. They quarreled over the right of Philip to tax the French clergy. Philip always needed money, and the church was very rich. In the past, the French church paid some feudal dues to the king that church leaders owed to him as their caesarean. Additionally, the French clergy were required to to buy papal edicts to pay certain taxes to the French king to pay for the Crusades in the mid-1200s. Philip IV decided, basically, levied a tax, skip the Crusade part. And in 1295, Philip started demanding more money from the clergy of France. Some French leaders of the church balked at the new levy and appealed to Boniface to help them raise their ta resist their taxes. Before we go into any more detail, let's talk about the people. First, Philip the Fair. We've talked about him, about him before. He's not the fair because of his character, rather because he had a fair complexion. He's the grandson of Louis IX, that is, Saint Louis IX, and he was described as fair of face and unfair by nature. He's famous for two things, debasing French currency and incorporating judicial torture into the legal system. Because he needed a great deal of money, he came up with all kinds of ideas to fleece his subjects. An historian once, once observed that the maxim that he, that he lived by was the Roman adage, whatever pleases the king has the force of law. Philip was vain, greedy, ruthless, and a real genius for politics. He was, in short, a very nasty piece of work. Unfortunately, the pope wasn't much better. Boniface was elected after the papacy of the hermit pope, Celestine V. Celestine was a pious monk, the darling of mendicant saints, and also a unwilling pope. He was only known for two actions. One, write an edict that allowed the pope to resign. Two, do exactly that. He resigned, or abdicated, six months into office. Since then, only two popes have actually abdicated. Gregory XII in 1415, and Benedict XVI in 2013. And a, an abdicated pope was a political liability, so Boniface imprisoned him for the rest of his life. Boniface came from a noble family of Italy, and wanted to use Peter's chair to enrich his family and hurt his rivals. He's hardly a fit to be the Vicar of Christ. Dante, who might have met Boniface, consigns him to hell, calling him the Prince of the New Pharisees. Now, Boniface was a staunch supporter of papal power, and he was anxious to make it clear that he regarded himself as the overlord of Europe. In 1296, he issued a decree, and in it he threatened excommunication of any leader who would impose taxes on church lands without his consent. But Philip responded by banning the exportation of French coinage, which kept the church money that the Church of France was collecting from sending it to Rome. Now that's a lot of money. Boniface is forced to back down. He, uh, to, he had to allow the king to collect new taxes. But that was just the first round between the two men. In 1300, Philip arrested a French bishop for treason. The bishop was fomenting trouble, and in fact, he was even trying to start a rebellion against the king. He was arrested and tried for treason in the French court. Philip wanted the pope to degrade the bishop so that he could be legally tried in, in a secular court, but Boniface refused. The pope protested vigorously that clergymen could only be tried under canon law in a church court, regardless of the defense. Philip reacted to Boniface's unexpected rebuff with an equivalent of a pamphlet war. His, his writers questioned the Pope over his secular powers over princes, and also wrote pamphlets questioning the moral character, piety, and fitness for Boniface. In response, Boniface, in November of 1302, issued a new decree, Unum Sanctum. In this document, Boniface insisted that the Pope was the supreme power in Europe. Now, Boniface threatened to excommunicate anyone who disagreed with Philip on the top of the list. 200 years before, that would have worked. But in 1300, the papacy had lost much of its moral prestige, and folks tended to be more loyal to the government. Most Frenchmen, even French clergymen, were with the king. Philip would respond to Boniface's edict by announcing to the French clergy that Boniface was a heretic, a criminal, and worse. 
he learned that the Pope was staying at one of his residences in northern Italy. He sent soldiers to kidnap Boniface and bring him back to Paris to stand trial before the French church for heresy and for abusing his position. The agents captured Boniface, but discovered that he was too ill to travel, so they let him go. The Pope returns to Rome, but so humiliated by the experience that shortly after he will die. 